Hi everyone, David Aragona here with the Timeform US Road to the Derby Series, taking a look at one of four prep races being run around the country on Saturday afternoon. Out in California, the fifth race on their Saturday card is the Grade 3 Robert B. Lewis, going the slightly shortened distance of one mile for the three-year-olds. In past years, the Robert B. Lewis has been run at a mile and a sixteenth as the second prep following the sham. This year, they did not run the sham in January, so starting out this progression to the Santa Anita Derby with a slightly shortened one mile uh, derby prep in early February. We'll throw up the field for this race. And as you can see, there are three runners trained by Bob Baffert in here. And as has been uh, widely reported at this point, uh, Bob Baffert uh, cannot run in the 2024 Kentucky Derby. And uh, even though there are 20 Kentucky Derby qualifying points on the line for the winner of this Robert B. Lewis, those points cannot be earned by a Bob Baffert trainee. So something to be aware of. While it's a derby prep for quite a few in this race, it's probably not a derby prep for wind me up coach prime or nisos unless there is a uh, some rule change by churchill downs in the upcoming months but still it's an intriguing affair matchup of three-year-olds and while i don't yet have the morning line for this race you would imagine that the number six nisos one of those bob baffer trainees is going to be a substantial favorite in this race this horse has shown a lot of talent in the first couple starts of his career this will mark his first attempt around two turns but it's just going the one mile distance it's not a huge stretch out from the seven furlongs that he tried in his most recent start. So I think there's a lot of anticipation to see how Nisos handles this next test on Saturday. To get a sense of how this race might be run through the early stages and where Nisos might place himself, let's take a look at the Timeform US pace projector for this race. And there is quite a bit of speed signed on here, as you would expect for one of these early season preps. Uh, a few horses that have shown speed sprinting or in their prior route races. And uh, among those are the three drawn in the outside post positions, the number seven stronghold, who is adding blink for this race, something you might want to consider with a horse that has shown tactical speed in prior starts. The most likely early leader, though, probably the number nine, Scatify, who was forwardly placed in a six furlong sprint on debut, breaking from the outside post position. You have to imagine that his rider, Hector Berrios, will be looking to get forward. The number eight, McAvey, another horse coming out of sprint races that could potentially be forwardly placed. And Bob Baffert's got those three horses that are shown sort of in a clump there in mid-pack, the one, five, and six. Maybe the number one, winding the up goes forward, breaking from that inside post position. Nisos is shown back in sixth early, though he does get that LP flag, indicating that he has the highest time formula at this late pace rating in the field. Usually you see that flag assigned to a closing type. Nysos is not really that kind of horse. He's more of a speed stalking type. We did see him come from just off the pace in the Bob Hope. But I think the fact that he gets that LP flag just speaks to how strongly he finishes off his races. Let's go through this field in post position order, beginning with one of those Bob Baffert trainees. The number one, wind me up. And this horse has been a little bit disappointing since those first couple starts of his career where he looked pretty promising, winning his debut in gritty fashion and then stepping up to get that gaudy 113 time form US speed figure behind his stablemate Muth in the American Pharaoh last year. While Muth has panned out to be a very nice horse, placing in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile's next start, I wouldn't say that American Pharaoh has turned out to be the strongest race in retrospect, and we did see Wind Me Up regress sharply in the Breeders' Cup, his next race, and then last time out the Los Alamitos Futurity, he once again took money to go off as one of the favorites in that spot, but had to settle for fourth, finishing out of the trifecta, and I just wonder if he's a horse that really is going to continue progressing in these dirt route races on the Derby Trail. It's worth reminding that he has played Plenty of turf pedigree on the dam side. His dam was a good turf horse. So even though it's not really Bob Baffert's MO to run these horses on the turf, I wonder if there might be a surface switch down the line for Wind Me Up if this race doesn't quite work out for him. The number two is Ace of Clubs, and he's just a long shot in this race or likely to be one. He was no match for some common rivals that he faces again here in the Los Alamitos Futurity last time, checking in last of five that day. Prior to that, he was trying turf a couple of times with uh, some lackluster results. He did win a couple of races earlier in his career, sprinting on the dirt, but those were a maiden claiming event in a starter allowance race. This is a much tougher field than those uh, victories he achieved at back at Del Mar last summer. Next up, we'll take a look at the number three, Better Than Gold. And his last race, when he broke his maiden, going this one-mile distance at Del Mar, 
I really like the finish that he put in this day. You could see he's a long striding son of Nyquist who takes a while to really find that rhythm. And even at the eight ball, it doesn't quite look like he's going to get there, but he just continues to maintain those steady strides to the wire and is able to stay on to run down these two pace setters getting up at the finish line. As you could see, Mike Smith knew he was going to get there a couple of jumps from the finish line. Mike Smith stays aboard here for this first stakes test for this Gary Mandela trainee and just feels like one that is going to continue getting better with experience and potentially more distance down the line. Now, he's not getting more distance here. They're going the one-mile trip again, but there's supposed to be at least some pace in this race for him to close into, so I'm not going to be surprised if he's able to pick up some pieces in here. He's going to have to get faster if he's going to take down some of the more fancy runners in here, including those from the Bob Baffert stable, but better than gold feels like one you just want to keep tabs on moving ahead down this Kentucky Derby trail. Number four is Moonlit Sonata coming out for Tim Yachtin. And he wanted a big price on debut, causing quite an upset, connecting at 33 to 1, winning pretty decisively, getting a 103 time form US speed figure. But he stepped up next time, faced off against uh, Muth in the San Vicente. And was no match for that uh, top Bob Baffert trainee, finishing uh, fifth of six runners that day, just not really able to take a step forward. And now he's stretching out to the two turn mile distance. And I'm a little skeptical about him getting some added ground. He's really a half to some sprint types, much more sprint pedigree on the dam side. So not a lot of confidence that uh, Moonlit Sonata is going to take the necessary step forward going this two-turn configuration. The number five is another Bob Baffert trainee, the number uh, that is Coach Prime, and he was an expensive uh, yearling purchase going for $1.7 million as a son of Quality Road. Oddly, Bob Baffert actually started this one on the turf, went off at a, a big price that day for a Bob Baffert first-time starter, and you could kind of see why they started him on the turf. He's a horse that clearly wants to go the two turns, and uh, I think they were just giving him that start first time out. Step forward, switching over to the dirt, second, time, second race, um, got a fast pace to close into, going this one mile distance but finished off the race nicely to win by over seven lengths beating suspect competition but doing so in impressive fashion and then last time out repeated that speed figure against uh stakes company in the los alamitos futurity again just kind of staying on at one pace not really picking up ground late and he just feels like that kind of grinding runner who will get some added ground However, he's turning back here to the one mile distance, likely to be positioned in mid pack early. And we'll just see if the leaders come back to him and if he's going to have the necessary turn of foot to stick with his stablemate, Nice Host, who we've already seen show a lot of finishing speed himself from a closer position, uh, running position during the race. And speaking of Nice Host, let's take a look at him up next. Uh, we'll check out his most recent start when he earned that stakes victory in the grade three Bob Hope back in November at Del Mar. And, uh, wins don't get much more visually impressive than this. You could see Flavi and Pratt just like a statue in the syrups, just basically putting his hands on the horse's neck, giving him very mild encouragement through the stretch, and he just extends that stride through the finish line. Really impressed with the way this horse is able to sustain that top speed all the way through the wire, and he's earned a couple of time formula speed figures that just simply put him on another plane above his competition in this Robert B. Lewis 118 of 119. Those are among the best speed figures we've Seen from any three-year-olds anywhere in the country. So NISO is definitely coming in with an advantage into this Robert B. Lewis. And I'm not too concerned about the stretch out to the one mile distance based on the way that we've seen him finish off those last couple of races. And you can see from this formulator fact that I found for trainer Bob Baffert, he has success with this move. Now, from a wagering standpoint, uh, I wouldn't say that this necessarily is a huge positive staff for Nisos because Nisos is likely to be under even money in this race. And Bob Baffert's 50% win rate with this statistic is not necessarily going to um, create any positive value with a horse like Nisos at such a short price. But I think it just is worth pointing out that Bob Baffert has done this successfully before with three-year-old males trying a route for the first time in graded stakes like Niso says he's winning at 50% with a 12 horse sample over the past five years. Up next is the number seven stronghold. We'll take a look at his most recent start when he was narrowly beaten by the Bob Baffert trained Winstock in the Los Alamitos Futurity. The good news is he finished ahead of a few rivals that he'll be meeting again here, including a couple Bob Baffert horses like Wind Me Up and Coach Prime that we already, we already talked about. Stronghold had his chance to win this race. You can see he sneaks up the inside of the eventual winner right here and just can't quite finish off the race at the very end. 
I would anticipate that is why that Phil D'Amato is now putting blinkers on for this race, just hoping that they make a difference at the very end of the race when he's got to find a little bit of an extra push to uh, actually uh, you know finish off the one mile distance. However, I'm a little concerned that the blinkers might make this horse a bit too keen in the early stages. You see the comment line for the last race that he was pulling in the early stages. When I watched that replay for myself, I wouldn't say he was necessarily pulling, but he definitely was traveling in the bridle and just borderline keen at the first quarter mile of that race. And you don't want to see the blinkers potentially push that horse over the edge and potentially get very rank at the start of the race. So I'm a little concerned about that for Stronghold and also just not sure that at the two turn mile distance is necessarily going to be his forte moving forward. And I think you do have to point out he was beaten nearly nine lengths by Nisos when they faced off in the Bob Hope two back. The number eight is McVay, and he is a maiden coming into this race, but he did run a pretty nice speed figure last time out when he came off a slight layoff going the six and a half furlong distance in mid-January, finishing second to the highly touted Bob Baffert trainee, May Moon, who won that race by seven and a half lengths. But I thought McVay took a nice step forward in there. He was a little bit green down the back stretch, um, just a bit uh, rank moving up into traffic, but eventually settled down, finished off the race nicely, just no match for the winner that day. They're asking a lot of him throwing him into stakes company here, stretching out to a mile for the first time around two turns, stepping up against tougher competition. So there are definitely some hurdles for McVay, but he does have pedigree to stretch out. So not going to be surprised when the added distance actually does agree with him. The number nine is Scatify, and he's the runner that I think could be most forwardly placed in this race, potentially the early leader heading into that clubhouse turn. And he did show good tactical speed on debut at Los Alamitos, stalking the pace and then coming into the stretch, taking the lead. I will say watching the replay of that race, it did appear like he was going to win that race more easily than he ultimately did. He sort of got a bit leg weary in the late stages and only was able to keep the margin at half a length rather than drawing away from his competition through the end of that race. He's by Justify, so from that standpoint, uh, a mile might be within his scope. But on the dam side, there are a few more sprint influences. His dam herself, she was a, a confirmed turf sprinter during her racing career. So not exactly a ton of evidence that this horse is going to benefit from the added ground. And I think he probably will need a slight step forward after beating a maiden group of mediocre quality last time at Los Alamitos. He's stepping up against much tougher company here, including that formidable favorite, Nisos. And as we take a look at my top picks for this race, I am not trying to beat the favorite. I've been really impressed from what I've seen from Nisos so far in the afternoons on the racetrack. And watching his morning training coming into this race, especially his most recent workout, which was in company with uh, the Bob Baffert trained older horse, Reincarnate, he handled that one pretty easily in the morning, and, and Reincarnate is a very good workhorse, and the acceleration that Nisos displayed in that last January 28th work just leads me to believe that this horse is really thriving coming into this Robert B. Lewis, and if Nisos shows up, I think the rest of the field, this field could be in trouble, so not saying anything too clever at a short price, but I am not trying to beat Nisos. I could use a horse like the number three better than gold underneath. He should be a decent price in this race, and he feels like one that does have more improvement coming. We'll see if it's enough to pick up a minor award behind Nisos in this Robert B. Lewis on Saturday at Santa Anita. Good luck after playing the races this weekend.